All right. We're back. A um, couple of things different. I don't have a hat today. Um, because in my mind, I had this idea of, for those of you old enough to remember Sesame Street, it was always the guy on Sesame Street, and he, his, he had the same barber that I have, basically, which means he had enough skin on the top of his head that somebody would walk up to him and write a number on there. And, you know, sometimes it would be like the number six or, or the number five, and, you know, the, would be sponsored by the number five. So today, um, our lessons are sponsored by the number nine. And if there was a painter behind me, he could easily paint a nice nine in the back of my head. Now, for those of you who are not old enough to remember the old Sesame Street days, then this really doesn't make any sense to you. But there's always a part of my lessons that probably don't make sense to somebody. So this is just the start of that. Okay, that being said, nines are a cool grouping of, of notes. And uh, for people that uh, take lessons with me know that I, I, I do them a lot, and I use 16th note triplets a lot. So that being said, someone had uh, mentioned I was doing showing something, and... Uh, they usually, people take notice of these for whatever reason. They like these, they sound good. Um, so at the lesson, somebody, I was demonstrating something and I probably did this, um, this nine or, or at least these triplets. And they said, what is that? And I thought, okay, well, I guess that's my next video. So, um, so that's where we're at. So this lesson sponsored by the number nine. So these are 16th note triplets. So we've got, I'm going to try to make this faster than most of my videos. So um, we've got six notes, right? per beat of time. So we've got 24 notes um, in one measure, okay? So we've got this odd number of nine, right? Um, uh, so we're gonna have to resolve this some way at the end, and we're gonna resolve it with a group of six notes, right? So it's nice uh, because you get this exact number at the end. Every time you do these two groupings of nine, um, you, you, you come out on four which is nice, so, because um, uh, two nines is 18. It's all math. I think I said that in the last video. Okay, um, so we've got these nines, and we're going to play these. And now I, I don't, when I do my stickings, you know, everyone will come up with their own stickings that they like, and that's great. And uh, I'm going to, it's going to be at the top of the screen. My stickings that I use a lot for these kinds of fills are right, left, left, right, right, left. I don't know why. People ask me why. I don't know why. I, I, I'm sure over the years I've, I have sticking charts that I've played and I can do them different ways, but generally when I teach this, this is the sticking I use. So, um, right, left, left, right, right, okay. So that's, that's the, first group of 16th note triplets. You can count them one triplet and triplet. You can count them one and a and and a. I seem to recall a certain teacher named Gary Hess back in the day who said one ta ta and ta ta and uh, I've been counting them that way for 30 years and Gary Hess knows a lot more about reading than I do so I'm gonna go ahead and go with one, uh, one ta ta and ta ta and use that way of counting but you can use whatever you want. So uh, basically, one tata and tata. That's a group of just six notes, right? The regular 16th note triplet. So now we've got to add three notes at the end to make our nines, right? So generally, I use my kick drum, right? A double pedal, single pedal, depending on the speed. So I'll generally play them right. them however you want to orchestrate them you know you that's that's up to you uh, I generally do something like okay so so there's your nine so then you have to do six at the end which is just again starting on the four a group of 16th note triplets that you can do whatever you want with that works. That would be cool. There's lots of things.
things you can do. Um, one that I use a lot that I'll show you uh, 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 again, I, Joe Soretti. I don't know why I do it this way. There's always the question why. I, 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 don't, I don't know why. You know, it's just the way that feels good for me, just like everyone else has stickings that feel good for them. But um, so generally, one of the things I do on four, I, I usually finish up that fill sometimes. <laughs> Right. So I just I guess I'm lazy. I just made it easy and I went Right, that's the last four or the last six notes on beat four uh, And it's kind of nice because you lead with your left on your snare um, Which I think gives it a different sound because I guess if I was real lazy I would lead with my right on the floor Tom, but I like the way it sounded leading with my left on the snare. So uh, the nines that I sometimes use sound like this. So that's, there's the nines. They're nice fills. There's three nines, or two, um, two nines, and then um, a group of just Six, sixteenth note triplets. You could also do a flam on four. Sounds nice. Twice, uh, and then I resolve it with a, uh, a different uh, whatever a flurry of notes on beat four. So I'll play it twice. <laughs> um, so it, it, it lends itself to a lot of things. And then I think later I found out um, somebody had this thing called the Weckl Nines. Um, uh, I forget the, the on YouTube. And I looked at the Weckl nines and I realized that basically that's all I'm playing. So I'm just playing. I don't know how he um, orchestrates his. It's probably different. But, um, and probably because I listened to Weckl so many, for so many years, sort of through osmosis or whatever, I just sort of developed this, this thing. Uh, but uh, certainly I take no credit for it. I'll give it the credit to him because uh, they named it after him. Somebody did the Weckl Dines, and I'm sure he wouldn't take credit for it, and he would say he learned it from somebody else, so whatever. But, um, so there you go. Then, of course, you can move things around. Sometimes I do the nine, and then I do two sixes, um, and then you have to resolve it somewhere, so I think I resolve it with a three, you know, at the end of that or something, so something like this. I'll probably screw this up because I don't play this fill as much, but... Um, you know, it's cool for soloing. You're soloing. You do the nines. It sounds good. It's also good for a nice big fill. You know, whether it's one measure, two measures, whatever. It's got a big full sound. And uh, the sticking, the sticking that I use, the right, left, left, right, right, left, um, adds for some different sounding things because of where you place your hands on the drums versus just alternate sticking the whole time. So uh, let's see. So you could do something like. Something like this. Do that. That's the normal one. And then you do the six, um, the double sixes. No editing. You know, this isn't, uh, how many times do I say this? We don't edit this. I let that people know that I screw up just as much as anybody else. Uh, I can't even play my own video. It's nines. I can't even play a nine. It's not a nine. Okay. Uh, oh, you could also move your left hand up here. Obviously, again, orchestration. You can do that. You can move the kick drum around. Try, what I'm trying to get back to is the nine six six uh, three thing.
that's the sticking. You'll have it up on the screen. And then once you get used to that, um, you know, there's lots of different stickings. Obviously, read the, go through the stone book, and you'll have a billion different kinds. But, you know, you don't need a billion different kinds. You really only need a few that you use. Uh, Vinny probably has a thousand, and Weckle, and Simon, and all those guys. But, you know, that's why they're, that's why everyone knows their name because of one name, Weckle, Vinny, Simon. So, you know, you really, to me, you only need a few to kind of spice up your playing. You know, you don't need to know 50 of them. So, anyway, there it is. That's, that, those are my nines, Phil. Again, right left, right left, right left, right left, right left, right left, right You know, uh, you could certainly play it straight. I just don't. So um, it's my video. So I'm going to show you what I play. There you go. What do you think of that? I'm getting stern. Um, okay. So there you go. Uh, nine, nine, six. That's basically it. Or some people call them the Weckl nine. So great fill. Sixteen note triplets. Anyone who knows me for five minutes and talks drums knows that I love triplets. So, um, there you have it. It'll be at the top of the screen. This video is sponsored by the number nine. I still don't have anybody to write that. I got my cool Vic Firth headphones on because why? Because, you know, 30 years of playing and your ears never stop ringing. And uh, that's not a good thing, but uh, you get used to it. So anyway, uh, that's why I generally try to use these, and they do a great job of cutting out the highs uh, because, uh, you know, every once in a while you notice that uh, your ears, uh, you, it feels like uh, you got back from a concert 24 hours a day. So that's the way it goes. So anyway, so that's why uh, usually you'll see me with these on or some kind of headphones. Last time I had my old Radio Shack headphones. Radio Shack, there's a blast from the past. I cut the cord off them. I've been using those literally since eighth grade. I've had these headphones. Uh, apparently, I didn't use them enough because uh, uh, too, uh, my ears definitely are always ringing. But uh, these Vic Firth ones are probably better. Um, I think they're I think they're great for practice. Um, so if uh, if your ears are ringing or if you don't want your ears to ring, these might be a good idea. So there you go, nines. Have fun with them. They're some of my favorite things in the world. Uh, triplets in general. So that's it. Um, I don't know. I have no idea what the next video will be like. I'll wait for the week to go by and see what some student shows me. Maybe Slipknot. You know, that's, that's always an exciting thing. You know, uh, you know, you never know. You get the student who wants to play Slipknot or, uh, you know, Cradle of Filth or, um, you know, Mashugana or some of these bands. And I listen to them and then I gotta have, I think I usually go to church right afterwards because I feel like, uh, I need some type of, uh, you know, interaction with a uh, godly figure, I think. But uh, you never know, you know. Uh, it could still be that. The sl doesn't Slipknot have the slow song? Snuff, I think. That's kind of a nice one. Uh, and uh, uh, But there are others that are you know, not so good. But anyway, uh, there you go. So uh, we just never know at uh, uh, the, well, I still don't know the name of my own channel, but you still never know what the next video is going to be like. So as usual, like I end every lesson, if I remember, practice, practice, practice. Uh, play these nines. They're a lot of fun. You can use them all the time. It's not one of those weird, obscure things. You could definitely use them and have fun with them, and they sound great. I can tell you that they do get sort of noticed. People like them when you play them, and uh, that's not why you play them, but they sound good, and people like them. It's a good combination, right? So uh, there you go. Um, that's it. I'm coming around to turn it off. I don't know where. I got it. I got it.